Hello guys, hope you're all doing very, very well. I'm delighted to be joined by a, a personal hero of mine. I'm going to say it straight off the bat, and it's, it, there's no secrets that I'm a Chelsea fan, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, not gonna hide that from the off. I'm joined by the legend that is Gary Cahill. How are you doing? You okay? I'm good, thank you. You? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Obviously, we're here yeah. to talk about uh, Chelsea facing Real Madrid in the Champions League, and yeah. a little bit about Chelsea at the moment. Um, first things first, obviously. Let's 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 get straight into it. Um. It's fair to say that Chelsea are facing a little bit of an uphill battle at the moment against, you know, the reigning European champions, 2-0 down off the first leg. But there's something about Chelsea, and this isn't me being biased. This is me. This is me. I speak to other fans if they say this, that they seem to have this, this aura and it would be a, a very Chelsea thing for us to win the game 3-0. <laughs> um, yeah, no, what was... is it about Chelsea that makes people... I know what you mean. I think it's just them European nights, isn't it, at the bridge? I think there's something special and I think the fans uh, just tweak the volume up that little bit louder. Um, so they are really special nights. Um, and this time, secretly, obviously, playing Real Madrid is an unbelievable task ahead, isn't it? But, you know, at the same time, there's nothing to lose. And we've been there before, haven't we, over the years where we've been behind and it's almost like there's nothing to lose. And I think that's the mentality that the players should have, go out there and give everything they've got. Um, and there's nothing to lose. Absolutely. I mean, with 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 that, is there any nights which where it's 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 felt like that for you? You know, when when you were playing for Chelsea, was there any moment where you thought, right, the odds are against us, but we're just going to go and give our all? Yeah, the, there was a fixture obviously in two thousand twelve when we won it in Napoli when we was we was down heavily, um, and obviously at Stamford Bridge that was a bit of that mentality where there was nothing to lose. Ended up to, uh, during the game and obviously going to extra time. I think Brana Ivanovic scored an extra time. So that is a prime example of a European night at the bridge that can get turned right on its head. So mm. I think is that as motivation. I think look at the Dortmund game. I was at that game at Stamford Bridge where they obviously uh, was one behind and they turned that around at 2-0 and I thought they controlled a lot of that game, to be honest. Um, so they should be, they should take confidence. Obviously, that was this squad that we're talking about. So they should take confidence from that that they can turn it around, mm. albeit we're talking about Real Madrid here, so it's going to be a great, a great game, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, with with that though, I mean, you're talking about the mentality of this team, and there's there's been a lot of question marks over them, especially over the past, let's say, forty eight hours, really, especially after the Brighton game. And um, there was talk of obviously Todd Bowley going into the dressing room, questioning the mentality of the squad. I mean, what what is it at the moment this with this season specifically as well? That what? Why do you think that Chelsea are in such a difficult position? And why do you think it's just not going right at all? I just think there's been so much change at the football club all at once. Um, and I think sometimes for that to work and be successful, I feel like you've got to be you got to be quite lucky when you make that many changes and then it just rolls out and it's super successful straight away. It's like sometimes when a new player signs for the club, they take a little bit of time. I think when the owners have come in, they've come in and obviously it's not just like, for example, when I was there and a manager might change or a player might leave or someone else might come. It's all, it's like the ownership's changed, the manager's changed, players have changed, more players have come in, the backroom staff's even been jiggled about. It's so much change all at once and I feel like that's really disrupted the the, the whole club. Not to say, obviously, you know, these are, these are obviously clever guys who have bought the club and they'll have a plan moving forward. So, it's just a matter of thing of just settling and getting some organisation in the summer and rolling on from them. But I feel that that's been the main reason, to be honest, mate, from uh, for this season point of view. Absolutely. And with that, obviously, you mentioned the manager there. Um, and obviously, a, a big part of the success was uh, Roberto Di Matteo, but also, you know, the you guys pulled together and, and really yep. pushed through in 2012. Um, Frank has obviously taken... The, the, the hot seat for the rest of the season and, and he's under a lot of scrutiny already obviously people the, his win percentage came out uh today which he's only won one game in his last 17 which is obviously very tough for him but he's he's shown before at Chelsea that he, he can be a good coach you know he had a 50 percent win percentage in his first stint people talk about his character and obviously the Di Matteo you use that and and a lot of other tools as well we're on on that run in 2012. Yeah. Is there anything you think he's carried through as a manager that might not be being appreciated as, as a person, his characteristics and how he can lead people? It's hard because obviously I've not worked under him as a manager. Um, but as a player, I can speak from obviously him being in the dressing room and he was a leader, but in, in, the, in the way of follow my lead, you know, the way that he did things, the way he trained, the way that he did extra after training, his, his mentality, 
um, the way he performed and went about things on the pitch, vocal when he had to be. But that was his kind of way. Um, so maybe that's the case with with uh, with management. I think he's come into it like we said before as such a difficult period. It knowing him and knowing what he stands for and and obviously what the club means to him. If they, if they pick the phone up and ask him, I saw his interview and they said they pick the phone up. They asked me to do it. Hundred percent, I do it. Um, his legacy as as a player is there for for all to see. And his experience, he could maybe pass a lot on in these European ties for, for experience. We were just talking about that Napoli game. Then he was in that, I think he scored a penalty. So he's been involved in massive nights at the bridge. He knows what it takes. He knows what it means. He's done it. He's been there. So he can pass on some vital experience to some of these younger players, I'm sure. Mm. And and with with how that, that this game's going to go, uh, how, how do you feel Chelsea should approach this? Is it a case of just go for it, listen, leave everything on the pitch because... If we lose, obviously that that is the end of the season. You know, there's pretty much nothing yeah. left for Chelsea to play for. What would you do if you were advising the players in that dressing? Well, this is the thing, and this is the pressures that have been at Chelsea, isn't it? Because that's exactly what you just said. You lose this, the season's done. So that's the pressures that have come along with being at the club and these sort of ties. Um, if if for, for what for what it counts from my point of view, I would say to him, the ideal way, the ideal strategy, I would think, is to go into that game manage the game first 10, 15 minutes, settle everybody down, play your way into it confidence-wise, get the crowd on your side, score the first goal, then I really think you'll see a massive uh, swing in momentum potentially and also the crowd will lift again in terms yeah. of vocal. Um, that would be the ideal rollout for Chelsea, I think, to go on then. And then they go on and romp it 3-0, mate, and then that'll be everyone will be happy, won't they? But... Again, we talk about managing games, and this is the this is the only thing you look at Real Madrid, and there's none better, is there, in this competition? So, but that's what I would say. I mean, the first goal is key. The first goal is absolutely key, just to manage certain aspects of the game. I think that's the uh, when I used to play in the European nights in the big when you used to get to the last stage of this competition, I always found that it was more concentration. Sometimes at the end of the game, I was mentally tired because I was just concentrating the whole game so hard, as well as physically. It was mentally because with players like Ben Zimmer and the list goes on, you can't switch off for a minute. You switch mm -hmm. off for a minute, you get a goal. And I just felt like it really drained me mentally by the end of it because you're just so, you know, concentrating so hard. So, but all, all part and parcel of managing it and being, being right for the game. So a, lot, a lot of these lads, see like Thiago Silva, Aspi, Kovacic, all these players, they don't need me to tell them that they've gone on and, and done it themselves. So you need that experience in there as well, I think. Do you think that's something that's been missing at Chelsea this year? Do you think maybe that the experience on and off the pitch has maybe been something which has maybe cost Chelsea on, on a variety of occasions, with Thiago Silva being out injured, Asby being out injured in many occasions as well, Kovacic, again, injuries, being and such huge players in the team you mentioned there. Do you mm. think that that's maybe cost them to get us into the position that Chelsea are in? And do you think that maybe... This is now like the the last throw of the dice sort of for, for this group of players. Do you think that maybe after this year, you're gonna we're gonna start seeing a, a complete rebuild instead, as well as the one which we've seen over the past twelve months? Maybe yeah, because the start of the season, as well as what we've just said about why we might have had a tough season, is there was so many injuries, weren't there? He could, there was never a period of time where he could probably field his first eleven, um, so that was difficult. But in terms of experience, yeah. But you only get experience if you're a young squad or young players. You only get experience by playing games. And again, sometimes that's when I say like you just have to kind of let things roll out along the the bumps of obviously this season not being great. We spoke before about saying we won a league once, we won a league one year, finished tenth the next year, won a league the year after. Like work that out. Um, so experience in these games I feels massive um, because there's so much pressure, so much riding on it to manage that takes experience but you only get experience from playing but um, yeah it, it could be an element of that you know you have more Aspies out there you uh, you have a good chance um, Thiago obviously people like that that really know how to manage these big games and I'm sure that would only help well we'll have to see but listen I'm going to say it 3-0 I hope it happens <laughs> we, we no, all need no, no, it it's going to be a great game isn't it it's going to nothing to lose great game at home Mouth watering tight. It's what it's what I miss. I'm retired now. These are the games. These are the games that people would die to play in. So uh look forward to watching it.
we we could use you, Gary. If you, if, you, if, you want to, if you if you want to come out of retirement anytime soon, just, sure, mate, just no, let them know. Experience, maybe, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what we need. <laughs> Listen, thank you very much for your time, Gary. I really appreciate it. You're welcome, mate. Yes, thanks.